We are visualizing the middle turbinate and we displace or push gently the middle turbinate laterally. That shows us the superior turbinate there. And to find the sphenoid ostia, we gently again push the superior turbinate laterally, go between the septum and the superior turbinate, and there you can see the sphenoid ostia. This is the superior turbinate recess where the posterior etmoid drains. And again, if you go medially to superior turbinate, between the septum and the superior turbinate, you will go straight to the sphenoid ostia. So this is the place where we enlarge the ostia in a functional endoscopic sinus surgery so that the, the sphenoid sinuses drain very nicely. Let's dissect the uncinate process now. This is the middle meatus. And again, you can just see the attachment of the uncinate process by locking the uncinate. And you can see where it is attached to laterally into the middle wall of the maxilla. Then, you can put in your Fleer's elevator. And in this case, I'm going to try to dissect to show you the anatomy of the mucosa and the bone in between. What I've done now is to elevate the uncinate process and to show you the blind sac of the uncinate process itself. It's like a sandwich with a mucosa medial and lateral to it and the bone right in the center in the form of a boomerang. So this is how an uncinate process folds over the osteomedial complex and the OMC recess as well. So now, let's see whether we can remove only the bone of the uncinate process and therefore you can appreciate how the blind sac that is covered by the mucosa of the uncinate process. There, as you can see there, that is the blind sac that is like a blind sinus that is formed posteriorly with the uncinate bone in between in the shape of boomerang. Then, you can actually do a retrograde uncinectomy by using a back biter. And you want to remove the inferior portion of the uncinate process as cleanly and as much as you can. Because the minute you are able to remove the inferior portion of the uncinate process, you'll be able to have a good look at the maxillary ostia, as I how I showed you just now. Subsequently, you can remove the remaining part of the uncinate process, and in this case, because the bone has been removed previously, there's only left the mucosa of the sac or blind sac of the uncinate process, which we are going to remove now by using a faucet later. So let's appreciate the anatomy again. That is the uncinate process blind sac. We are going to dissect it all the way to the top. This becomes a bit more tedious now simply because we removed the bone initially to show the dissection of the anatomy of the uncinate process. We've pushed the entire uncinate process sac alone to the very top and then use a true cutting to remove all the way to the top of the... Let's do a total etmoidectomy now. We've already removed the uncinate process and we can visualize the bulla. The bulla, as you can see, is very clear once the uncinate process has been removed, which is gate number two, uncinate being gate number one, and where the middle turbinate moves and laterally attaches itself is the ground lamella. So that would be the boundary between the anterior and the posterior etmoids. Again, the first thing we need to do before we do an etmoidectomy is to make sure there's an air cell. So the air cells are all, always our friend. And by using an instrument, we can actually puncture the belly of the bulla etmoidalis itself, making sure there's an air cell. Once we know there's an air cell, then we can use any instruments you like, whether it's a powered debrider or just a forcep like what I'm doing right now, to remove and open up all the cells in the anterior etmoid or etmo bulla etmoidalis, and you can actually visualize here the ground lamella, which is a grade number three. Let me remove the upper part of the bulla as well, so that there's a complete excision of the bulla etmoidalis or the anterior etmoids. This shows us very nicely the ground lamella. And again, you can actually make out to see how the middle turbinate actually turns inside to form the ground lamella which is divided into the vertical and the horizontal portion. 
So behind the ground lamella will be the posterior ethmoids. Again, you can see in some parts, the ground lamella can be quite hard. And for you to enter the posterior ethmoids, the best place is to enter between the junction of the vertical and the horizontal portion. Again, we have to make sure that there's an air cell at the back. So in some areas, it can be quite tough. Use an instrument, make sure there's an air cell at the back. And once we know that there's an air cell, then you can excise the ground lamella quite nicely and expose the posterior ethmoids. The posterior ethmoids usually will have larger air cells, but a single air cell. And again, you can do this part either by a powered instrument or you can use a simple two cutting forceps or cutting forceps as what I'm doing right now. You can see now we are already in the posterior ethmoids. So I'm removing the ground lamella completely so that we are able to visualize the entire posterior ethmoids. That is the mucosa of the posterior ethmoids that we are stripping, which in real life we will not do so, but we do it more for the cadaveric dissection. And that's the posterior ethmoids, uh, the view of the posterior ethmoids itself. Subsequently, let us clear up a little bit more so that we can appreciate the anatomy a bit better. So now, we are using the forceps to remove the mucosa of the posterior ethmoids. Then, we will be able to appreciate how medial to the posterior ethmoids is the lamina papacea, and how, sorry, lateral to the posterior ethmoids is the lamina papacea, and medial to the posterior ethmoids is actually the superior turbinate, which will form a landmark uh, on how to make sure that we are in the posterior ethmoids itself. Now, I'm going to continue to remove the remaining parts of the ground lamella. And then, that's a very nice view of the posterior ethmoidal artery, as you can see it up, just up there, which is just in front of the sphenoid, anterior wall of the sphenoid, which is gate number 4. Maxillary ostia, beneath the, the bulla, as you can see, which has been removed the ground lamella that has been removed as well. Now we're going to use a kerosene punch to remove the bony ledges. So with this, it's very safe by using this instrument because then we will not dissect or enter into the skull base accidentally. So by using a kerosene punch, we are able to appreciate all the vertical ledges that's coming from the skull base itself. And we can actually remove them and again, Medial, sorry, or lateral to the ethmoids is the lamina papacea. We're using kerosene punch now to remove the vertical bony ledges. And right posteriorly is a very nice view of the posterior ethmoidal artery, just anterior to the anterior wall of the sphenoid, trans ethmoidally, which is grade number four. We are now removing all the ledges laterally and that gives us a very nice view of the lamina papacea itself which forms the lateral border of the ethmoids. So this is how the lamina papacea is exposed. That's a very nice view of the lamina papacea and the posterior ethmoidal artery. So this is a total ethmoidectomy and again you can appreciate how this can be done very quickly in a matter of a few minutes with very few instruments as well. And this can be performed in real life with the same speed and the same instruments as well once you are comfortable with the anatomy. And obviously in real life, you will preserve the mucosa as much as possible. And up here, we're actually having a view of the frontal sinus and the anterior, possibly the anterior model artery. Let's confirm that a bit afterwards. But you can actually have a very nice view of the frontal sinus ostia, as you can see up there. Just let's clean up a little bit more. And how do we know that we're in the frontal sinus? Because you can see the bulge of the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. When you see the bulge of the posterior wall of the frontal sinus like that, you know that that is the frontal sinus. And again, this can be very nicely opened up once you follow the landmark as I've explained just now.
For the sake of dissection, I'm going to remove the mucosa over the skull base as well so that we can identify and visualize the anterior and moidal artery. This is more for dissection. And there you go. A very nice view of the anterior and moidal artery, the frontal recess, and you can see very clearly now the frontal, uh, the posterior wall of the frontal sinus, which always bulges out like a tummy, which is actually the bulge from the frontal lobe itself. Again, I'm removing all the mucosa so that we can have a very nice view. Remove some posterior, uh, some superior ledges of bone. And there, as you can see, the skull base. A bit more mucosa to be removed. Let's look at what is left after a total adenoidectomy. That's the ground lamella, which is a continuation of the middle turbinate. Again, laterally is the lamina papacea. We can very nicely see the anterior and the posterior admoidal artery, the frontal recess. And this is the posterior admoidal cavity or sinus with the mucosa inside the cavity itself. We are peeling off the mucosa from the posterior admoidal artery. We can see the multiple branches of the posterior admoidal artery as it goes into the turbinate. And how do we confirm that that is the posterior admoids? The easiest way is to look for the superior turbinate. We know that the posterior admoid is is, has got the superior turbinate as its medial boundary and we are able to see the superior turbinate here very nicely and then if we go back again into the middle meters we can identify the superior turbinate from the lateral aspect and then we know that we are already in the posterior admoids and what we are seeing is indeed the posterior admodal artery, and the orbital apex, and lamina papacea. Let us remove the mucosa of the posterior admod completely. Then, a very nice view again of the anterior admodal artery, posterior admodal artery, that's the anterior admodal artery, always running from uh, medial to lateral, anterior to posterior posterior admodal artery along the orbital apex and you can see how it's branching into the middle turbinate and the gate number four right at the end of the posterior admoids is the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus. So this is a trans admoidal sphenoidotomy. We're just removing a piece of bone from the turbinate itself. So when we enter the sphenoid sinus we always go medial and inferiorly. Let me just remove some of the pieces of bone from the turbinate itself so that we are able to appreciate the anatomy a bit better. And as you can see now, we are going to perform a transadmoidal sphenoidotomy. And that is the sphenoidmoidal recess visualized there with the sphenoid ostia itself. So with this way, we can confirm that what we are looking at is actually the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus transatmoidally. So once we are sure of that, we can easily break open the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus. And we are actually looking into the sphenoid sinus through the posterior admoids. Again, to confirm, go medial to the middle turbinate, to the superior turbinate, sphenoid model vessels, supple flap, sphenoid keel. And then we can actually dissect the mucosa out of the sphenoid sinus and visualize the structures. Here we're going to remove the mucosa from the sphenoid sinus to show the structures of the sphenoid sinus itself. And removing the last remnant and attachment of the superior turbinate and that is the view of the sphenoid sinus. Again, you can appreciate how the posterior and modal artery is only a few millimeters anterior to the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus. Let me remove a bit more mucosa. There you go. Very nice view of a trans admoidal view into the sphenoid sinus itself. Let me suck the sphenoid sinus. And again, you can very nicely visualize the pituitary gland in the sphenoid sinus itself, thus confirming it is the sphenoid sinus.